Hello developers and welcome to this JavaScript um, introduction video. Um, so basically the purpose of this video is to talk about um, JavaScript a bit and you know um, what's the main idea or the main focus of JavaScript. You know we're going to be talking about syntax, variables, um, statements, um, conditionals, loops, um, so, you know, it's kind of a video to get you um, grasp, grasping the whole concept of JavaScript. So hopefully this video will help. Um, so basically, you know, just before before we begin, I just want to talk a little bit about JavaScript. And JavaScript is one of the most popular programming languages in the world. Um, with JavaScript, you can change HTML content and HTML attributes. You can change CSS, and most importantly, you can validate the data. Um, good, um, good stuff also about um, JavaScript is that you can display data data in different ways. You can write into an alert box. Um, you can grab an HTML element. You can output on the HTML, um, and you can. You know, right into the browser's console as well. So you have different ways of viewing your JavaScript on a web browser. So let's let's go ahead and kind of start talking about um, JavaScript a little bit more in depth. And the first thing we want to talk about is the syntax. And basically, a the JavaScript syntax is a set of rules and how JavaScript programs are constructed. So when we talk about programs or a computer program, it's a list of instructions that are executed by the computer. Um, in a programming language, these instructions are, are called statements, and each statement in JavaScript is going to be separated by a, a semicolon. So for example, in this example, I'm going to create three variables, and I'm creating variable x and equals 5, variable y equals 6, and variable c, that's equals x times y. So if I do a console log of c, I'm going to get 11. So basically, you know, that this is a, a statement. Each statement was separated by semicolons, and you're getting, um, since I'm using the console, I'm getting an undefined um, message every time I hit enter. Um, I also made a mistake here. I didn't add the semicolon. Luckily, since this is a small um, program, it did not crash, but each statement will be separated with a semicolon. When we talk about statements in JavaScript, um, basically, you know, statements will be composed of values, operators, um, expression, keywords, and comments. In this case, we created variables. We assign values to those variables. Um, we use operators. Um, so we add x plus y. Um, when we talk about variables um, or values, you know, um, we basically talk about fixed values or vari variable values. And when we talk about fixed values, these are, are called literals. And variable values will be called values. Um, variables, I'm sorry. So variable values will be called variables. Fixed va values will be are called li literals. And when we talk about literals, I mean, we're talking about a string. Um, I mean, and when we talk about a string, we're, I'm saying text. So, like, my name is... Uh, so this is a, this is a literal. Um, well, uh, another example of little, it's numbers, so 100, and it could be 100, but this, uh, dot 50, so I can also use, um, write a number with, um, decimal space or not. When we talk about variables, um, so that, the other part of the statements or, or values, when we talk about variables, we're talking about, you know, um, storing data and in to declare variables in JavaScript we're going to use the keyword bar and then we're going to use an equal sign and with the equal sign we're actually telling 
the, the, the language that we're going to assign a value. So whatever we have to the right, we're going to assign it to the left. And in this case, we're going to call our variable x. So we are assigning 6 to our variable x. In that case, it's undefined, but if I do a console log with x, I should get what I store in x, that, and that's 6. Okay. Um, we also talk about operators in, in our statements. Um, so when we talk about um, operators, we're actually, you know, um, the equal sign is an assignment operator, but we also have arithmetic operators, um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So, you know, and they'll follow, like, the order of procedures. So if I have, for example, 5 plus 6 inside a parenthesis, and then I have a multiplication, the parenthesis will go first, and then everything that's inside the parenthesis will go first, and then the multiplication. So that's basically um, 11 times 10, um, 110. You also, we're also going to see expressions. So... You know, again, uh, when we talk about expressions, it's combining values. When we talk about values and well, and operators, so something like five times ten. So we have little values with the multiplication that's up an operator, and we get fifty. Um, we can use variables bar equals x, x equals six. So x times ten, so that's sixty. So we can so expressions are a combination of values um, and operators to compute or to get a result or compute a value a final value. Um, so all right. So hopefully so far everything's good. Um, other thing we can see here um, are keywords. Um, JavaScript keywords are used to identify actions to be performed. For example, bar is a keyword. So this is a keyword. So you can use bar bar because it's it's, this is already a reserved keyword, so bar is used to tell the browser to create a new variable. So bar x, that's perfect. Um, but bar bar will probably, you know, see, can I use keyword bar as a variable name? So, but we can do anything else, and that's perfect, okay? Um, when we talk about another, you know, um, syntax or s things that are included within our syntax is that we have JavaScript comments, and when we have comments, and uh, this is com when we talk about comments, these are statements that are not executed. So we can comment in two different ways. We can do a single line comment, and you can do two slashes, um, double slashes. So single line comment, nothing happens. And if you want to do a multi-line multi comment, you do slash star. This is a multi-line multi line comment. And, and, you know, so, okay. So I just wanted to show you, I guess in this console window, Multiline will not work properly since I can, but this is the way to multiline. So if you keep writing underneath, you there you go. You have you will have no problem. Okay, um, so just make sure that if you want to multiline comment, just open like this and um, write everything you want to, and then close with a star and a slash. Okay. Um, other things we can are important to mention um, within the JavaScript syntax. JavaScript is case sensitive. That means that if we create this variable x equals 6, it is not the same if I do variable with the capital X. So these are two different variables. And, you know, so that's why it's. That's why JavaScript is case sensitive. So here we just created two different bar bar um, variables, even though we know I am using the same letter, letter, one in capital case, the other one small caps. But if I do this, I will get six. And if I do 
this, I'll get seven. So for us, it's the same letter. For the computer, there are, or for JavaScript, there are two different things completely. Okay. So basically, um, in terms of what syntax, this is pretty much it. Um, important stuff that that we should um, mention, you know, uh, and when we talk about variables again, let's um, recap. We talk about variables. Um, remember that we'll use bar x equals five. The equals is an assignment operator, so we're assigning the number five to the letter x. We can use operators, so we can say x plus five will be 10 because we're adding five plus five. Um, so that we're there we're using arithmetics operators. And so we're creating JavaScript statements. And important thing to remind, to always be you know aware of, all JavaScript statements will end in a semicolon. All right, so I'm guessing with this now, we can move forward and let's talk about, let's talk now a little bit about conditions, okay? And when we talk about conditions, um, we know that when we write code, we want to perform different actions when we have different decisions. So in JavaScript, we can use an if statement, an else statement, or even an else if statement. If we use if, we can specify, if specify a, block, a block of code to be executed if the specific condition is true. When we use the else, it's to specify a block of code that to, to be executed when that same condition is false. And if we use an else if, it's to specify a new condition to test if the first condition is false. Okay, so let's, you know... Um, look at a few examples or look at the syntax of those um, conditions, okay? So basically, you know, we can say, and let's do it with, with an if else. Okay, so let's create some variables here. So let's say, so variable x equals 4 and variable y equals 7. Okay. And so let's say if variable x is less than 7, then hmm, this is going to be interesting. Let's see how we can do this. Okay, let's start. Let's go. Let's start this again. We got an error there. Okay. We got the console. Okay, so let's. We have variable x equals 4. Variable y equals 5 or 7. Now let's say if x is my, um, it's less than y then console log hello else console log adios okay so basically what we're seeing here um it's that if you have this variable um, if you is if your variable you have your if statement inside parentheses you're going to find the condition to check whether this is true or false if it's true we'll get the hello if it's false we'll go to the else so this is the way an if else block statement works so let's see what happens so if I click on run with JavaScript so I get hello. So I get hello because four is less than seven. Now, if I change this around, I'll get adios. Why? Because 
I'm only displaying hello when in this case I want if I'm if I'm saying four is larger is greater than seven this is false so I'm gonna go to the else the if is only going to be executed when it when it is true okay so let's clear the console let's go into another example and let's look at the if else if statement okay so for this we're going to create um, new variables so let's create um, variable well again x equals 3 variable y equals 5 and variable z equals 15 so and we can do this, the following so if x if z modules 15 and this is and this equals 0 I'm going to do a console log and say this buzz okay if else if I'm going to say well x if x module the 3 equals 0 console log oops fizz and let's close this with an else else console log z um, all right, so let's see what happens here, and what we get is that we got fizzbuzz, okay. And the reason is that since it found it found this first one to be true, it can stop looking for the other one. Um, but let's look another quick example um, to see everything you know going together okay um and we're going to start looking also at like a little bit of javascript functions so what we can do here also is so let's say okay let's create a variable called greeting and one that looks for the time so here's this is a function or a method that grabs the hours for us and what we're going to do is the following okay so if time is less than 10 then we want to do a console so well greeting will be equal to good morning now otherwise if time else if if time is less than 20 we want greeting to be good oops good day right all right else we want greeting to be good night and now i'm just going to do then a console log greeting and Let's run this. Let's open the console. So right now we're in good day. So because we're um, in the afternoon. So notice that if I run this program later at night, I'll get good night. If I run this tomorrow morning, I'll get a good morning. So it'll de it'll depend on the hours I'm getting. Um, but the way this is working right now is basically. Um, so let's check here. Um, if time is less than 10, create a good morning. If not, but if not, but time is less than 20, create a good day. Otherwise, we'll get a good night. So basically, that's the way um, conditionals work. Um, I just wanted to talk about two more things. Um, let's talk about loops. Um, and then we can probably talk about 
um, functions, okay? So when we talk about loops, um, loops are handy because um, if you want to run the same code over and over again, um, we can do this by just creating one instruction and that instruction will run for a specific set of time, okay? So, you know, when, when in a for loop, we, want, we have what we call a for loop he header. So it will look something like this, for, for um, bar i, zero, um, while i, it's less than five, and then i increment. Okay, so let's talk about, real quick about this. Okay, so this is the first statement. In that first statement, um, we're basically, you know, and this is the first instruction that is executed when the when the loop starts and this is something you're selling look i have this variable and this variable will start in zero so i variable i will start in zero then i'm checking then statement two is a condition and it's defining that condition and it's saying okay look as long as my variable i which start in zero is less than five i'm going to continue running this loop and finally after the loop has been executed, I'm going to run this instruction to make sure that when everything is finished, when my my statements inside my loop, my for loop are finished, I can increment this variable i to the next number. And in this case, when we finish this, and we'll, we'll have a whole a look at the whole picture right now, and what we can do here is basically, you know, go ahead and do um, something like like console log i and let's see open the console run so we got zero one two three four okay what's going on here so basically what's happening here is that I started my loop with the initial value of zero. I printed that value in the console. So I checked, is zero less than five? It is, so let's print that number in the console log. Then I did, an I, in, I incremented i by one, so it changed to zero changed to one. Is one less than five? It is, so let's print one again. Then it, ch it changed to two, is two less than five? It is, so let's print it, is three less than five? It is, and it's four less than five. Yes. Now, when it got to four, this instruction was one again, once more executed. But what happened? Five. It's not less than five, so it stopped right there. So basically, this is the whole, um, the general idea for a for loop, and for loops, all loops will have same statements. Will have the variable to start off with. A condition and an updater if you will like instead of me calling an increment it'll, you can call it an updater finally I want to talk about about functions and when we talk about functions you know functions are defined with the function keywords um, you can use a function declaration or a function expression when we talk about function declarations um, it's basically you know to just call function function name and that's it. Um, and you just created your function. We'll see any. I'm going to paste this. Uh, I'm going to paste my example right here now. Um, this is an HTML with a um, function created. And I'm, access, I'm changing the HTML content as well here. Um, so let's talk about this now. Um, basically, you know, as always, semicolons are used to separate executive um, JavaScript statements. Um, since a function declaration is not a statement, it will not take a JavaScript semicolon or a JavaScript semicolon, not a simple semicolon. Um, so let's look at this example right here. Okay, so we have an HTML, we have we have our JavaScript running inside a our body in an HTML. This is a 
one of the three ways you can do this. So you can assign JavaScript inside your inside the head tags, inside your HTML, inside your body, and you're gonna have an external JavaScript file. Um, and for this example, we just created JavaScript simple function inside our body um, around the script tags. And basically we're calling it, so this is a way to call one of the ways to call a function. Function, my function, I'm expecting two parameters or two arguments, A and B. Um, and what I wanna do is that I wanna return A and B to this paragraph tag. How can I reach this paragraph tag? I'm gonna do it with this um, method. So document.getElement by ID, I'm searching in my HTML for an ID that matches demo. And since I found it, since, since I'm gonna found one, what I'm gonna say, look, well, this HTML using this other property or method or attribute in our HTML, I'm gonna say, look, call my function and tell them, I wanna know what's four times seven. So when I do my function for seven, four will equal A and seven will equals B. And I'm doing A times B and I'm returning this value to my function here and this will get saved here on demo on get element by id demo dot inner html so this means that when i see my output it'll it'll have this b paragraph the example calls a function with performs calculation and returns a result and i change this empty um, p paragraph to the result to my result and it's 28. okay so basically this was uh um, a short, kind of short video um, explaining how JavaScript works. Hopefully, um, it makes sense and it'll help you throughout the course. Um, if you have questions, always free, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video. It makes sense. Um, and good luck JavaScripting. All right. Have fun, guys.